Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print on demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how you can create this design right here. This is a really simple, mostly text only design, but I'm going to go over, you know, sort of how you find fonts and put them together in an aesthetically pleasing way like this. So if you would like to learn how to do this design in this design style, go ahead and stick around. All right. So here I am on Canva's home page. I am going to be making a design for a t-shirt today. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the top right hand side of the page where it says custom size. I'm going to click on that. And then what I'm going to be entering is going to be 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. So that will pull up a blank page. And so your page should look like this. I like to design for black because the darker selling, uh, the darker colored t-shirts tend to sell the best. So I always optimize my designs for black. So I'm just going to go ahead, change my background color here to black. And then what we're going to be doing is mostly a text design and we're going to use some cool different fonts and, you know, combine them together in a way that's aesthetically pleasing. Um, which which is you know simple and fun so we're going to use a little motivational saying now i did already trademark check this so it's free for you guys to use and this one's going to say find yourself and be that now there's a lot of different ways that you could put this on a shirt uh, i mean you could use any fonts that you could think of any layout that you could think of any design style that you could think of and you can use this quote over and over in different ways i'm going to do this in like i said a very a decorative kind of scripty font. Um, obviously the quote itself is targeted really towards females. So I'm going to make it more of a, a female oriented design. So I'm going to start by pulling up some text boxes and I'm going to have each word essentially be its own text box. So I'm going to start by clicking T on my keyboard. And the first word that I'm going to say is going to say find, and then I'm going to pull up another text box, hit T again. And this one is going to say yourself. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit T again and put and T again, B, and T again, that. Okay. So you have to kind of know your layout, but you also have to kind of pick the fonts. So it's hard, you know, to decide if you want to pick the fonts first or your layout first. I like to pick some fonts and then see what I can do to kind of make those work together. And so what I typically like to do if I'm doing something like this would be like to combine a scripty font with more of a formal, um, I don't want to say corporate, but yeah, a more of a, just a regular formal uh, font. Um, and so one of just the regular fonts that I like that's really easy to use is actually one called Alike, and that is um, free on Canva, so you can use Alike. So you can either search for it and just put in Alike, or I think I probably found that uh, under the corporate search. So up here, there are different um, styles that you can search through. Um, hit that button, it'll show you different, obviously different styles. So if you were to go to corporate right there, it's going to give you, you know, lots of different pretty plain corporate style fonts. This is the one I was talking about alike right here. And so alike works really well when I'm looking for that kind of font. I'm gonna do that with both the find and the and. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and make those capitals, um, all caps. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on find. And then I'm gonna go up to the top where it has a little a and a big a. If I click that, it's gonna make everything uppercase. And I can do the same thing here with and. I can click on and come up to the top, click the little A and the big A and make everything uppercase. So now I've got my find and my and, okay? So now what I'm gonna want is the yourself and the be that to be kind of scripty. So now I'm looking for some scripty fonts. And what I particularly wanna look for is a scripty font where I've got that kind of bigger first letter. Um, and so the ones that I really like for this are usually the Amsterdam fonts. Those ones always have that big first letter and then kind of smaller the rest. Um, 
or the capitals, I should say. The capital letters are really big, and then the other letters are very small. Now you can find this by just searching for script fonts. And so again, I can go up and just hit script and give it a second. It should give me different script fonts. So as you can see here, it just pulled up all the different script fonts. And so you can look through those and kind of see what you think looks good. A lot of them, for example, I'm going to put it on Nexa so you guys can see it. That is a nice script font. I do want the first letter to be capitalized because I'm looking for that big first letter. But as you can see, the first letter isn't that much bigger than the rest of the fonts. And so what I'm looking for something is one of those ones where the first letter is very large and then the rest of it's much smaller. Um, and so you can see most of them are going to be pretty close. Here's one where the first letter is nice and big. That is hard to read though. You always want something that's easy to read. So you can search down through all the script fonts. The ones that I like, as I said, were called Amsterdam. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll down to the Amsterdam fonts, or you can just go ahead and type in Amsterdam. There are different ones. So I think there's one through four. There we go. So when I typed in Amsterdam, it gave me the Amsterdam four, one, three, and two. I don't know why they'd come up in that order, but there's one through four. And so they're all slightly different, but they all give you that very large capital first letter. And so we can play with these and sort of see how they look. So for example, here is one. Oops, I'm gonna kind of get some of these things out of the way so that you can really see what I'm doing here. So that is right there, Amsterdam. Four. And so we're just going to play with all of them and see how they look here. So here is one, not as fond as one. I don't really like the style there. Let's try again. So now I'm on three, mm, not super fan of three. Let's try two. Uh, two looks kind of cool. I do like two. So right now I'm between either doing a two or the four I liked. And so we can see which one that we think would look best for our particular design. I think I decided that I would like the four better. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to make it nice and big and sort of center it right there. And then what I'm going to do is take my find, which by the way, might be hard for you to click on if it's behind the yourself because this is a pretty big box. If you ever have that problem, all you have to do is send yourself to the back in terms of the layers. So you can hit control in your left bracket and that will send anything to the back. So now if I was to try to click on find, I should be able to get it in there a little bit easier take the find and I want to sort of fit it in here so that it looks good like it sort of fits right in that area and now I'm going to do the same thing with the and I'm going to take that and and I'm going to bring the and up and have it sort of fit again nicely in this area in between and so those kind of look like they fit together so when I'm doing this it's almost like putting a puzzle piece together so I find different fonts that look good together and find ways in which they fit together that makes them look cool um, and so now I'm going to go ahead and go down to be that. Now I separated these for one reason and I'll show you. So I'll take the B, oops, and I'll go ahead and write that just so you can see. And I'll move that one out of the way. And I do want the first letters to be capitals. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with a capital B and a capital T and make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to try the Amsterdam's out again. So Amsterdam. Four. That one looks pretty cool. Now I can see that they're sort of overlapping the way that I did that. Um, here's Amsterdam one. That one looks pretty cool. I like that, but now it looks like they're spaced a little far apart. Amsterdam three, mm, maybe not so much. Amsterdam two, again, not so much. I think for this one, I actually liked Amsterdam one the best, but so let's go with one. I want the that to be closer to the B. Um, and if I get rid of that space, I lose the E. Even when I get rid of the space there, I, it's not quite as close as I might like it. I want to be able to play with the distance. And that's why I separated the B and the that. Because if I have two different words now, I can you know, put them together a little bit easier. So I'm going to take my that. I'm going to make that again, Amsterdam 1. 
make it nice and big. I'm gonna take my T and make it a capital. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of this, that. Now I have two separate boxes. So I've got one and two. And what I can do is, you know, space them as close together as I want. I can put one higher, one lower. So I can play now with the way that these two words are oriented. And so that's one thing that I can do when I've got the words separated that I can't do when they're together. So if I wanted anything to look almost, you know, artsy, I want it to overlap, I want it to look like it's angled up or down, making it in two different words kind of works good for me. So what I can do here, I mean, if I want them to be level, I can level them up, space them in as tightly as I like. So if I think that that looks kind of cool, right now they're the same size too, so I could make one a bigger size. Let's see. Oh no, they are different sizes. So this one is 373 and this one, there we go. Now they're the same size, 373 and 373, perfect. So I do like the way that that looks right there. And if I wanna make them bigger together, I can go ahead, group them. And now I can stretch them out together and sort of play with the way that that looks. So I could do something like that. Maybe I want it to be a little bit bigger still so that it fits nicely with the other ones. I can have the B overlap the Y a little bit. I think that that looks kind of cool. Or maybe I move it over in the page a little bit more so it's more centered. Cool, so I like the way that that looks. So you can see I've kind of filled most of the page here with just this font style design. And I've only used two different fonts. So Amsterdam 1 and Amsterdam 2 for the script, sorry, three different fonts because then I use the alike for, for those two. But I really didn't use a lot of fonts. They all look good together. And then once I have this how I like it, I can just add in some little flourishes. So hearts, stars, swirls, dots, anything that you think might add just a little bit of flourish so that it's not entirely a text-only design, though you could have an entirely text-only design if you want. I think I'm gonna throw some hearts in there. And because this is a light scripty design, I'm probably gonna do more of a heart outline than a solid heart. So let's go ahead over to the left-hand side where it says elements. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a search for hearts. And we'll go ahead and we'll search graphics for that. And there's always some fun hearts that are just outlines. And so you can look at the different types um, because this is more of like a nice handwritten stuff. I don't want anything that's gonna be too symmetrical like that one. I'm looking for one that's a little bit more hand drawn. This one actually kind of looks cool if I can change the color for both of these to white. I can take this particular heart, maybe shrink it down and there's lots of different places that I could put it, angle it to make it look kind of cool. I kind of like that heart. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the font. So it's a little thicker in some areas, thinner in other areas. It's a nice outline. It actually looks like it goes really well with these fonts. So I can look and see if I find any other ones. Here's just a nice fun hand-drawn one. Here's a grouping if I wanted to do a grouping someplace. I do want to be kind of minimalistic with this just to have like one or two little flourishes here. So nothing super big, but you know, something that looks kind of cute. Here's another one and that's in gray. If I can turn this one to white, this is a little grouping of two hearts that I think looks kind of cool. Maybe I bring it down here so I can play with the sizing. And where might that look cool? That might look cute. That might look cute here, so something like that. And a little trick too, if you're trying to get it lined up exactly where you want it, you can always use the arrows on your keyboard, so the up, down, left, right arrows to move any element you want, and it'll move it one pixel at a time, so very micro adjustments there to get it exactly where you want it. So if you're ever having trouble with your mouse, that's one way to do it. You know, so this already looks really cute. I like that a lot. Let me see if I want to add any more. I'm just going to see if anything else looks cute. So there's more pretty hand-drawn ones, more grouping ones. Um, I don't want sort of that style. It sort of still has to look like it all goes together. So single line, not necessarily scratched in. I don't want anything filled. I want it to look hand-drawn, um, but not be messy. Here's another cute one that I like. Let's see, I can do this one in white again. 
So this is another one that had two hearts, but again, they're very cute. Let's see, how might that look nice? Something there, maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, something like that. And again, if I lose it, I just have to bring the text to the back so that I can bring my parts to the front to make sure that I can move them easy. So that looks pretty cool. So I just got a few little flourishes of hearts. The hearts all look like they go together more or less. They look nice with the design. And so I'm happy with this. I think it looks really cool. Now I do need to move it up in the page. So once you get everything the way that you want it, you can go ahead and just uh, left click somewhere in the corner outside of your design, hold that down. You're gonna go ahead and drag over everything. And if you've got it drug over everything, now we can move it all as one. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move it up in the page and make sure that it is centered where I like it. There we go. And so that looks cool. So I've seen a lot of this style of design, a lot on Etsy, but you can find it on Amazon as well. And it's just a cool way that you can play with fonts and, you know, put them together to make, you know, fun designs. Of course, this is all white. You could do this in different colors if you wanted to. Um, I could go ahead and bring this down. If I wanted to, I could even take this one here and space out the font a little bit. So if I went up to the top where it says spacing and I tried to bring that letter spacing out just a little bit, I could do that. That gives me just a little bit more space here to put my find if I wanted to make my find bigger or make sure I had a little bit more room on either side of it. So different ways that I could play with it. But I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and title this. It's just gonna be find yourself and be, oops, be that. And then we're gonna go to share. You're gonna go over to download. You'll want a transparent background. It is a PNG and then you're gonna hit download and now it is ready to go on t-shirts, tank tops, sweatshirts. You can really put it on just about anything that it'll fit on, you know, pillows, tote bags. Those would all be cute things that it would look good on. If you wanted to do something like this in a sticker, all you would have to do is change the color of the font to a darker color so that it would show up on the white background of a sticker. And boom, you could make it into a sticker. You could do the same thing if you wanted to put it onto a white mug. You could just change the font color to a darker color so that it would show up nice on a white mug. So you can make lots of different versions of that same one. And the easiest way to do that, if you don't know, would just be to go ahead and hit duplicate page. Go ahead, take your background color on your second page and just make it sort of an off color there. So now I've got my original, here's my off colored one. And now all I would have to do would be to change the color of the font. And so I would just go ahead and do that for each font. So I click on each font and then just change it all to a black color, for example, if I wanted to do it black. And so we could see here, you also have to do it for each of the hearts, change the colors there. Again, if you have trouble grabbing onto the heart because maybe you've got something in the front, you can always hit control in your left bracket to try to bring that to the back. You might have to do it a couple of times so that you can grab hold of what you want. Once you've got all of your elements um, black like that, then I could change this background color again. I can make it white. And so you could see now how it would pop if you put it on a white item. So like a mug or a sticker, now you can see how that would look. Um, and so you can make as many versions of this as you like by just you know, duplicating the page and then editing it. So then I could make a pink version or a red version or a combination of pink and red and white if I wanted this to be more Valentine's-y. I mean, so you can see how you could play with this a lot. Um, and so it's ready to go. Like I said, if you have any questions about this, drop it in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. I hope you guys are doing really well with your sales and coming up with some good creative ideas and continuing to grow your skills and then learn new ways to design. Um, so I do hope to see you guys again um, and have a great day. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.